Hey, everybody, how's it going? The ancient first month of the biblical calendar is starting today, Saturday, April 18th. So I just wanted to go over the ancient calendar really quick and show what the ancient appointed times are for 2015. So for a more in-depth explanation of how the ancient appointed times work, you can watch the video here. It's called Ancient Calendar. I'll try to remember to link it below. It's also in the playlist, Bible Countdown to the Asteroid. But the short version is basically that Exodus 34.22 says the turning of the year should be observed at both the appointed time of the weeks of first fruits and the appointed time of tabernacles. And that is the turning of the year. And there are four turnings of the year, the spring equinox, the summer solstice, the fall equinox, and the winter solstice. So Exodus 34.22 says to observe the two turns that occur on the appointed time of the weeks of first fruits and on the appointed time of tabernacles. So we know the weeks of first fruits start in the first month and last until the third month. So that's the first turn that it wants us to observe. And then it says to observe the turn on tabernacles, which is in the seventh month. So it's basically saying, observe the two turns that occur in the first month and the seventh month. And then in Leviticus 23, it says the weeks of first fruits begin at the harvest, which we know is generally in the fall. So it's saying observe the turns in the fall, but it's also meaningful that the appointed times of the first month match the appointed times of the seventh month almost exactly. So you can look at this here if you want to, but basically each of the appointed times in the seventh month matches the appointed times in the first month, and that may indicate that the appointed times were meant to be observed in both the northern and the southern hemispheres. So the turn that's being observed in the first and seventh month would be observed in both the southern and the northern hemisphere. So the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere is the fall equinox in the southern hemisphere and vice versa. So the spring equinox occurs in the first month and the fall equinox occurs in the seventh month. So when the northern hemisphere is observing the first month, the southern hemisphere is observing the seventh month. And that may be why they match. So the text tell us to observe the two turns that occur at the harvest, which is in the fall. But whenever it's fall in the southern hemisphere, it's spring in the northern hemisphere and vice versa. Um, so it seems to tell us that the when we obs that we're supposed to observe these times over the whole planet, that it's meant for the whole planet. It wasn't meant for Israel. It was meant for the whole planet. So it's both the northern and the southern hemisphere. That's what it's all about. And the specific harvest that Leviticus 23 refers to is the wheat harvest. So Exodus 34 cl clarifies that the wheat harvest can occur either in the summer or the fall, depending on the location. So in the northern hemisphere, the winter wheat is usually planted from September to November and harvested in the summer or early autumn. And this is a world map of wheat production right here. The largest producer of wheat in 2009 was the United States, but in 2010, the top producer was the European Union, followed by China and India. And the wheat harvest is a code in the biblical text. It represents the escape, and we know that escape occurs at the time of the asteroid impact. So the first fruits of the wheat harvest in the Bible is observed during the appointed time of weeks, which starts in the first month and ends on Shavuot in the third month. But as we just saw, there are wheat harvests occurring at different times of the year, depending on where it's cultivated. So that may be the reason the Bible matches up the appointed times of the first month with the appointed times of the seventh month, because they're observing different harvests at different times, but they match. So it doesn't matter where you are in the planet, when you are observing the turn, so is everyone else. Whether you're in the first month or the seventh month, everybody's observing the turn of the year at the same time. So first fruits in the northern hemisphere would be the harvest in the, su in the southern hemisphere and vice versa. Okay, so that's, that's the very, very short version of how the ancient appointed times work. So let's look at 
2015 now. So the texts tell us to observe the turn in the spring and the fall. And the turn is the turning of the season, which is really the turning of the earth around the sun from either winter to spring or summer to fall. So in modern times, we know the exact date that turn occurs. We call it the equinox. But in ancient times, they didn't have the technology we have now. So they had to go out to observe the sun and moon physically. So in the northern hemisphere, winter, the sun will set to the left of due west and the moon will rise to the left of due east. That's the winter position in the northern hemisphere. But in the summer in the northern hemisphere, the sun will set to the right of due west and the moon will rise to the right of due east. So that's the summer position. The turn is that when the, you know, the setting and rising of the moon moves from the left to the right, that's the turn. And we call that the equinox. So that's the turn that the ancient biblical texts say to observe in the first and seventh month. So that's how we know that it's that the that the first and seventh month is occurring at the equinoxes. So in modern times, we know exactly which day the equinox occurs in 2015. The equinox occurred on March 20th. So in ancient times, they didn't have the internet. They they didn't have these these high tech. Um, instruments. So they had to actually go out and physically observe that turn. They had to figure out when the turn happened by physically looking at the sun and the moon. Um, Their instruments were not as precise. Sometimes they had to walk long distances to have a good view of the horizon. It was much more involved. So um, because the turn involves both the sun and the moon, some people have theorized that the ancients probably observed the turn on the day the moon was most visible, and that would have been the full moon. Then when the complete turn was observed on the day of the full moon, then they would have two weeks to prepare for the first day of the first month on the new moon, which would occur two weeks later. And So we've been watching the ancient calendar for a few years now. And if you're new to this channel, you might wonder why it matters. And one of the main reasons I personally watch it is because of the fulfillment of the Revelation 12 sign that occurred on the exact appointed time of trumpets in 2012 on the ancient calendar. So that sign is very rare. It won't happen again for another 500 years. And it occurred on the exact date of the appointed time of trumpets on the ancient calendar in 2012. So that indicates the ancient calendar is still in effect. So that's one reason why I watch it every year. And because the first and seventh month appointed times match, that indicates the time should be observed in both the northern and the southern hemispheres, which makes sense because we know Jesus said Israel refers to the whole planet. So in ancient times, they would most likely go out to look for the turn on the day of the full moon in either the 11th or the 12th month. So that would have been um, on March 5th. That was the full moon in March 2015. It occurred on March 5th. So if we were to go out and look at the full moon on that date, we can see that the moon was rising to the left of due east, which is the winter position in the northern hemisphere, and the sun was still setting to the left of due west, which is still the winter position in the northern hemisphere. So on March 5th, the turn had not yet occurred. So in the ancient times, they would not have started their first month on the new moon of March 20th. They would have waited to observe the next full moon the following month, because sometimes they they had to travel long distances on foot in the cold to look for this turn. It, It wasn't as easy for them as it is for us. So most likely they would wait They'd pack up all their gear and go home, and they'd wait for another three weeks to go out again and look for the turn again. So they'd wait until that next full moon to look for the turn again. So it did not occur March 5th, so they're not going to start their first month on March 20th. They're going to wait, and again, we know... The indication is that that is how they did it in ancient times, because that Revelation 12 sign occurred on their ancient 
trumpets in 2012. So um, we know this is how they did it. So so these are the moon phases according to the U.S. Naval Observatory. So the next full moon happened April 4th, 2015. So if we were to go out on April 4th and look at the full moon, it was rising to the e- to the right of due east, which is the summer position, and the sun was also setting to the right of due west, which is the summer position. So the turn was complete by that full moon of April 4th. And so that means the ancients would start their first month on the new moon two weeks later on April 18th. So you can see the first month in the northern hemisphere on the ancient calendar starts on the new moon of April 18th in 2015. And you'll notice it's a three-day window, and that's because, first of all, the days start in the evening and last until the evening of the next day, and second, because we don't know if they were supposed to start the first day on the technical new moon or the first visible crescent of the new moon, which which is the next day. So we consider the first day to be both the new moon and the first crescent, which gives us a three-day window for each day on the ancient calendar. So the first day of the first month in the Northern Hemisphere is either the evening of the 18th until the evening of the 19th, if you count from the new moon, or the evening of the 19th until the evening of the 20th, if you count from the first crescent. The other reason we use the three-day window is because the whole planet is the House of Israel and some places on the planet are a full day ahead of other places. So then Leviticus 23 verse 3 tells us the Sabbath is the seventh day. So the Sabbath will be seven days from the first day. That will be the window from Friday evening to Sunday evening this year. And I find that interesting because the text tell us we will not work on the Sabbath. And that happens to fall on the weekend this year, which is which is um, interesting. That's another congruency for this year in 2015, because last year in 2014, the Sabbath fell on, or the Sabbath window fell on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So it, it the Sabbath is not a Roman weekday. It, it says it had there are no words Tuesday, Saturday, nothing like that in the ancient text. So it's not a Roman weekday. It changes according to the big biblical calendar each year. Um, it's based on the moons, the, the new moon. So in 2015, the ancient Sabbath window will fall exactly on the weekend when many people do not work. So that may be a prophecy because it says the seventh day will be the day you do no work. And that falls exactly on the weekend this year in 2015. It's not always like that. So the first day of the first month in the Northern Hemisphere on the ancient calendar is April 18th through the 20th. And then in verse 5, we're told the 14th day will be Passover. So the 14th day from that first day will land on May 1st through the 3rd. And then we're told in Exodus 12, verse 18, that the seven days of unleavened bread should be observed from the 14th day until the 21st day. So that will be May 1st through the 9th, considering the three-day windows for each day. And in the Southern Hemisphere, they're entering the winter season. So they're starting the seventh month, April 18th through the 20th. And in Leviticus 23, we're told the first day of the seventh month is the appointed time of trumpets. So April 18th through the 20th, 2015, is the appointed time of trumpets in the Southern Hemisphere. Then in verses 27 through 32, it says the evening of the ninth day until the evening of the tenth day is the appointed time of atonement in the seventh month. So in the Southern Hemisphere, the day of atonement will be either the evening of the of April 26th until the 27th, if you count from the new moon, or the evening of the 27th until the 28th, if you count from the first crescent. Then verse 34 It says the 15th day of the seventh month is tabernacles, and that lasts for seven days. So the first day of tabernacles in the southern hemisphere will be the window from May 2nd to the 4th. That's the 15th day. And the seventh day of tabernacles in the southern hemisphere will be May 8th through the 10th. 
And notice Leviticus 23 verse 36 tells us Tabernacles also has an eighth day. So the eighth day of Tabernacles in the Southern Hemisphere will be the window from the 9th to the 11th in 2015. And that falls on the 2300th day. 2300th day that we talked about in a previous video. So that's a high watch right there. Also in the Northern Hemisphere, the first month will start the appointed time of the weeks. So in Leviticus 23, it says a sheaf of the first fruits will be waved on the morrow after the Sabbath. Then you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall you number 50 days. So this is the weeks of the first fruits. It's a period of seven weeks, exactly 50 days, and it starts on the day after the Sabbath when the first fruits are waved. So we know the New Testament tells us Jesus was the first fruits and he died on Passover. So Passover seems to be the Sabbath that it's referring to. So it says count 50 days and the first of those 50 days will happen the day after the Sabbath, which is Passover. So ancient Omer day one will be May 2nd through the 4th, depending on whether you consider the first day of the month, the new moon or the first crescent. Then Omer Day 7 will be May 8th through the 10th. Omer 14 will be May 7, May 15th through the 17th. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, May 15th through the 17th is Omer 14. Omer 21 will be May 22nd through the 24th. And that will line up with the standard Jewish observance of Shavuot which will land on Memorial Day this year. That's the, that's the standard Jewish calendar. That Shavuot, the wheat, the wheat harvest, first fruits, lands on Memorial Day this year, and that lines up with ancient calendar day 21 on the Omer. Then the ancient Omer day 28 will be May 29th through the 31st. Omer 35 will be June 5th through the 7th. Omer 42 will be June 12th through the 14th. Omer 49 will be June 19th through the 21st and the 50th day. Shavuot, the first fruits of the wheat harvest, will be June 20th through the 22nd, and it falls on Father's Day this year, and that's unusual. Last year, ancient Shavuot in the Northern Hemisphere occurred two weeks after Father's Day. So this year, the first fruits of the wheat harvest will occur on Father's Day. And Jesus said the wheat will be taken into the barn or into the Father's house. So that seems to be another congruency that's happening in 2015. Um, then on July 16th, the 10th month in the Southern Hemisphere starts, and that lasts until August 13th. So this year is Obama's seventh year. And in Obama's presidency was highlighted by the book of Daniel. And in the book of Esther, it says the 10th month in the seventh year of the king is when the bride is crowned. So any month that it's considered a 10th month between now and January, it falls in the seventh year of the person that Daniel 9 highlighted. So it is a watch. So this is the 10th month in the southern hemisphere from July 16th through August 13th. Then on the standard Jewish calendar, the Feast of Trumpets will occur on September 13th through the 15th. This is the standard Jewish calendar right here. And you can see on their calendar, they celebrate atonement or they observe atonement from the evening of September 22nd until the evening of the 23rd. So we have that right here. And their Sukkot or Tabernacles is from the 27th until the 3rd. And so we have that here. So that's the standard Jewish calendar. But on the ancient calendar, they would be observing the turn on the full moon of August 29th. And you can see the moon will still be rising to the right of due east in its summer position for the northern hemisphere on that day. And the sun will still be setting to the right of due west. So the seventh month would not have started on the on the ancient calendar on the next moon after that. Um, so then they would go look at the full moon of September 28th. And you can see the moon will be rising to the left of due east, which is the winter position. And the sun will also be setting to the left of due west on that date, September 28th, the full moon. 
So the ancient seventh month will start seven moons after the ancient first month on the new moon of October 13th or the first crescent on, the, on October 14th. And that will occur during the 10th month, October, on the Gregorian calendar. So that will be another 10th month that occurs in the seventh year of the king. That's this year. So ancient trumpets in the northern hemisphere will occur October 13th through the 15th, then ancient atonement on either the 21st and 22nd, if you count from the new moon, or the 22nd and 23rd, if you count from the first crescent. And day one of ancient tabernacles will be the window from the 27th to the 29th. And the seventh and eighth days of tabernacles will be November 2nd through the 5th. And then also, that's the northern hemisphere. And also Passover in the southern hemisphere will be October 26th through the 28th. Then Omer 1 on October 27th through the 29th. Omer 7 on November 2nd through the 4th. Then we have Omer 14 on November 9th through the 11th, and then Omer 21, Omer 28, then Omer 35, Omer 42, and Omer 49 on December 14th through the 16th, and ancient Shavuot in the Southern Hemisphere will be on December 15th through the 17th, 2015. And December 11th will start the 10th month on the standard Jewish calendar, and that will last until January 9th. So that's the 10th month in the seventh year of the king on the standard calendar. And then January 10th through the 19th, 2016, will be the 10th month on the ancient calendar. And that will be the final 10th month period that, start, that occurs in the seventh year of the king because January 20th starts Obama's eighth year. So again, Daniel highlights Obama's presidency. So the seventh year of Obama's presidency may be what Esther is referring to when it says the bride will be crowned in the, in the seventh year of the king in the 10th month. So we're watching all the 10th month periods that occur this year. That means the 10th month on the ancient calendar in both the southern and northern hemisphere, and also the Gregorian 10th month, and also the 10th month on the standard calendar. So um, so that, that will continue until January of next year, that seventh year of the king. So those are the ancient appointed times for 2015. So today is trumpets in the southern hemisphere, the start of the seventh month. And in the northern hemisphere, today, April 18th, is the start of the first month. So here are some relevant excerpts from Joel 2. It says, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm, for the day of the Lord comes, it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, a great people and a strong, there hath never been the like, neither shall be any more after it. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, and nothing shall escape them. Fear not, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. The pastures of the wilderness do spring. In the first month, the floor shall be full of wheat, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions in those days. So that's it for now. I hope you're all doing well, and I'll talk to you later.